What's up, everybody? Welcome in to the Philly Sports Power Hour. Hope everybody had a great weekend. We got some beautiful weather over the weekend. So not too bad. I know some of you tuned in to 97.5 The Fanatic. Check me out over there. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the Power Hour crew here this morning. For those of you who are just checking out the show for the first time, well, we are live every day, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., simulcast across the Jacob Sports Network, as well as Bill Calarulo Philly Sports Talk. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that follow button wherever you're watching and appreciate you being here. But a lot of news to talk about because the last time we spoke on Friday, the Eagles didn't have their backup quarterback yet. The Eagles didn't have a restructured Josh Sweat. So we're going to get into all of that today. We'll take a look at some of the updated cap numbers, what that could mean going forward now. What are the Eagles' next moves? Who should they take care of inside their building? And then I want to do a little Sixers, a little Flyers, and if we have time, we'll get into a little Phillies talk today as well. So an exciting time to be a Philadelphia sports fan. Sixers are in a playoff push. Flyers are in a playoff push. We're going to talk about the Sixers a little bit later, but finally, some good news about Joel Embiid. Maybe I'm stretching for it, but it appears to me some good news that he is ramping up to make a return. So we'll get into all of it, but let's get a little roll call here in the chat. I see Rob at Temple. Good morning, Rob. Let's just talk about Temple real quick. Big win in the semifinals over. UAB, or excuse me, Florida Atlantic, 14 and a half point underdogs. We all had crazy visions of grandeur that they were going to go into the semis and beat UAB, or excuse me, the finals and beat UAB. Doesn't happen. For those of you who don't know, I did my law school at Temple, so always root for the Temple Owls, and I think everybody in Philly roots for the Temple Owls. But now March Madness is officially here. The brackets are out. Everybody's getting their brackets in. I still got to do mine. But good morning, Rob at Temple. Good morning, Wine Niners Wine. My man. Always reminding everybody to hit that like button, follow, subscribe, check me out on the Fanatic. My man, my cheerleader, Wine Niners Wine. Appreciate you. David Laprati in the house. Thaddeus, 1117. Flexing and stepping. Who else we got here? Bry Guy, Crawley, Decoy Gaming, Solvane, Eagles fan, Twiz, Steven, Kyle. Robert, Fran, Barbara Carroll, Mike Fittery. We got them all. Kevin Savard, Daquan Barkley. <laughs> I love the new name, my man. And we got people checking in on TikTok as well. So good to see everybody. Appreciate everybody here. And look, let's jump right in. Talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. So the first thing we could talk about, because I see you in the chat talking about the Kenny Pickett, Justin Fields move. Now, Barbara Carroll asked the question, why did Justin Fields refuse to come here? I haven't seen that reported. I saw it reported that the Philadelphia Eagles spoke to the Chicago Bears. They speak to everybody. And they thought the price was too high to make a move for Justin Fields. I didn't see that Fields didn't want to go to Philly, but maybe I'm missing something. But if he did say that, well, I think it's obvious why he wouldn't want to come here. He's the clear-cut backup here. He's not going to play over just Jalen Hurts. So I don't think that's weird at all, Barbara Carroll. Why would Justin Fields want to come to Philadelphia when he is guaranteed to be the backup? The Steelers aren't paying Russell Wilson a lot of money. All of Russell Wilson's money is coming from the Denver Broncos. So he is going to compete for a starting job in Pittsburgh. He has a shot to start over Russell Wilson. He has zero shot to start over Jalen Hurts. So I don't find it weird at all if it was, in fact, true that Justin Fields wouldn't want to come to Philadelphia. But let's look at that move because I know a lot of fans were saying Justin Fields would have been a better pick would have been a better pick than Kenny Pickett. I disagree. 
I like the move of bringing Kenny Pickett here for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, every team in the league had a chance to make that trade with Chicago for Justin Fields. And I know they spoke with Justin Fields and Chicago allegedly helped get him to a team he wanted to go to. But if there was a team that was willing to give them more than a six-round draft pick, they would have made that trade. There were no teams out there that were willing to give up more than what the Steelers gave up. That in of itself should tell you a lot about Justin Fields. It should tell you a lot about what the NFL thinks of Justin Fields. He just got traded for a sixth-round draft pick. And there are a lot of teams out there that are a lot more quarterback needy than the Philadelphia Eagles and the Pittsburgh Steelers. There are teams that don't even have a starting quarterback on their roster right now, and they didn't make the trade for Justin Fields. So I said this over the weekend on the radio, only in Philadelphia, though, are we freaking out and debating over the backup quarterback position and who the Eagles should have traded for. But I think you need to look at a couple of things here, both on the field and the contracts, to understand why it would not have been a smart move to make the trade for Justin Fields. First of all, on the field. What has Justin Fields done in his career? What has he done in his career that all of us, or not all of us, I should say some of us, are freaking out that the Eagles didn't make the trade for Justin Fields? What has he done that we're going to now lose our minds that the Philadelphia Eagles didn't trade for Justin Fields? What has he done? It's a name. See, that's where fans lose their minds. They see the name. Oh, well, Justin Fields, first-round draft pick. He's had some highlight reels. That's what Justin Fields has done, highlight reels, because of his running ability. At times, he has done some incredible things at times, but it has never translated to winning. He's 10-28 and 28 in his career. I know a lot of that could be the supporting cast in Chicago, but he's also just not a very good quarterback. But when you look at the contracts, it made zero sense. And this is the part that I try to explain here. We dive into contracts a lot. We look at cap hits a lot. This is why it would have made zero sense to make the trade for Justin Fields. He is entering the fourth year of his rookie contract. That means it's the final year of his deal. He was a draft pick in 2021. He was a first-round pick, which means he comes with a fifth-year option. But you have to exercise his fifth-year option by May 2nd of this year. And I see people disagreeing with me about what Fields did on the field in the chat. But listen to the contract, and you tell me why it would have been a smart move. Justin Fields is entering the final year of his rookie deal. For the Eagles to control his rights for two seasons, they would have had to exercise his fifth-year option May 2nd of this year. That fifth-year option, because of playing time and where he was drafted, is going to be around $25 million. There is no way in hell the Philadelphia Eagles would exercise his fifth-year option before this May, before ever seeing him play, before him doing anything. So basically, you would have had him here just for this coming season. So it doesn't make any sense when you don't control his rights. So why would you trade for a backup quarterback that you don't control his rights at all after this coming season? But what the Eagles did is they traded for Kenny Pickett. He was drafted a year after Justin Fields, which means he's still on his rookie deal for two more seasons. And he's only going to cost about $4.35 million, 4 I think, $4.6 million over the next two years. So by trading for Kenny Pickett, as opposed to trading for Justin Fields, you now have a guy who can compete for your backup quarterback position 
and you control his rights for the next two seasons. You didn't have that with Justin Fields. If you traded for Justin Fields, he was gone after 2024. No matter what happened, he was gone because you can't exercise that $25 million option this coming offseason. You just can't do it. And then you look at them on and off the field. I don't think Kenny Pickett's a great quarterback. I don't think Justin Fields is a great quarterback. But the whole point of a backup quarterback is to be able to step in if your starter gets hurt and have the ability to win one or two games. Kenny Pickett in his career is 14 and 10. Justin Fields is 10 and 28. So if we need a quarterback to come in and win a game or two, I trust Kenny Pickett more than I trust Justin Fields. And outside of a few highlight reels, I still haven't heard what Justin Fields has done in his career that people are losing their minds that the Eagles didn't make that trade. Still haven't heard a thing. And we also have to clear something up. I've heard a lot of fans, well, the Eagles gave up a third-round draft pick for Kenny Pickett. No, they didn't. You have to look at the overall deal. Although they traded a third-round draft pick, It was the 98th overall pick. They got back from Pittsburgh the 120th overall pick. So all they gave up for Kenny Pickett was they moved down the draft board 22 spots, and they gave up two seventh-round picks in next year's draft. That's nothing. They did not give up a third-round draft pick. This is what I get frustrated about when I see fans on Twitter or calling up on the radio. They gave up a third-round draft pick. No, they did not. They moved 22 spots down. And I also see the argument that Justin Fields is similar to Jalen Hurts in the style of offense they run. Well, it may surprise you that Kenny Pickett also has the ability to run a lot of RPO-type plays. He did a lot of that. So this was a smart move. You picked up a backup quarterback for a lot cheaper than what you were paying Marcus Mariota last season. And now you have a guy that you can control for the next two seasons, and all you did was move down the draft board 22 spots and gave up two seventh-round picks. If you would have traded for Justin Fields, you do not control his rights after this coming season. It didn't make any sense to me why fans were freaking out about the Justin Fields trade to Pittsburgh. Doesn't make sense. So I'm just looking in on TikTok, too, to see what we got going on here. But that didn't make sense to me. Well, let's take a look at some other moves that the Eagles made. Oh, let me me say one more thing about the whole Kenny Pickett-Justin Fields move. I am also not buying the narrative that the reason the Eagles didn't trade for Justin Fields was because they didn't want a Carson Wentz situation with Jalen Hurts. That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, they didn't trade for Justin Fields because, you know, they don't want to mess with Jalen Hurts' psyche like Carson Wentz. It makes zero sense. If I'm Jalen Hurts, I am not threatened at all by Justin Fields coming in here. And if you needed any more evidence about what the NFL thinks about Justin Fields, just look at the fact that he just got traded for a sixth-round draft pick when every single damn team in the league, some without a starting quarterback, didn't make the trade, and it's a six-round draft pick. Justin Fields isn't a good quarterback. We have to stop with this crap. Every freaking name we hear, it's because it's a big name. Everybody loses. Oh, Justin Fields, you should have got him. He stinks. Anyway, Justin Fields. So now we'll see what happens in Pittsburgh with him competing with another quarterback with a big name who stinks, Russell Wilson. So we'll see what shakes. I see Coach 220 checking in on TikTok saying he believes Justin Fields is a good quarterback. He's just been on a bad team. Derek says Justin Fields is a fine quarterback. He had absolutely nothing in Chicago. Look, maybe it'll prove me wrong. Maybe he goes to a team with better coaching, with better weapons, and he can perform. But here's the problem. Like I just said, there are teams in this league who need a quarterback 
more than Pittsburgh, more than the Eagles, and they were not willing to give up a six-round draft pick for Justin Fields. That should tell you everything you need to know about how he's viewed in this league. So we can move on because I'm sick and tired of talking about the backup quarterback position for the Philadelphia Eagles and who they should have traded for. Kenny Pickett, in my opinion, decent move. Look, I know that all of us have these memories of 2017 and Carson Wentz goes down, Nick Foles comes in, leads us to a Super Bowl. That is so unlikely for a backup quarterback to be able to do. You may never see it again. So if Jalen Hurts was to get hurt for an extended period of time, I don't care who our backup was. They're not going to do what Nick Foles did. That is so unlikely. Nick Foles played out of his mind that postseason. The point of the backup quarterback is if Jalen gets nicked up and needs to miss a couple of games, like what happened back in 2022 when they went to Super Bowl 57, the point of a backup is they should be able to come in and win one or two games while your starter is out. Minshew couldn't do that. And not because of Minshew. I think that Quez Watkins was the reason they lost a couple of those games. But your backup should come in, be able to win one or two games, keep the season headed in the right direction. And Pickett is capable of that. I'm hoping we never find out. I'm hoping we never find out if Kenny Pickett wins games in an Eagles uniform. But he's capable of it. That's the point. So I'm done with the Justin Fields conversation. I think the Eagles made the better move bringing in Pickett than bringing in Fields. Anyway, let's look at some of the other things they did since we spoke on Friday. They signed 49ers linebacker Oren Burks to a one-year, $2.5 million deal, 28 years old, mostly a special teams player, also played for Green Bay, so we'll see what he can do on this team. Not a big move, not going to move the needle. But you do need depth. You do need special teams players. Look, we learned firsthand in 2022, as good as that team was, they were great on offense. They were great on defense. They were terrible on special teams. Came back to haunt them in Super Bowl 57. Last year, they bounced back in a big way. And the one thing you could say was a positive last season was their special teams unit. So like that move, bringing in a guy who's a special teamer, but not getting excited that he's going to fix our linebacker woes. So they do that. The other big news that comes out on Friday, Josh Sweat agrees to a restructured deal to stay in Philadelphia. Hold on. I got to just go back. There's a question on TikTok here from, can't read his name, Yuri. Do you believe Tomlin will get fields enough on-field action for him to develop into a wide receiver? No. I do not think Justin Fields is going to turn into a wide receiver. I think he will remain a quarterback. I don't think they're going to convert him to a wide receiver. What else we got? Animal Kingdom. Pick it better than Fields. Come on, bro. Are you agreeing with me, Animal Kingdom, that Pickett's better? Or are you disagreeing? And I'm not saying that Pickett is necessarily a better quarterback. What I'm saying is, is for your backup quarterback, for what you now pay Pickett for the next two seasons was a smarter move than bringing in Justin Fields. All right, moving on. So they restructured Josh Sweat, getting him to stay here. This move surprised me because the last I had heard was that Josh Sweat was definitely going to be traded. Now, what I think happened, and I did reach out to a few people, my understanding is Josh Sweat was entering the final year of his, of his deal with the Eagles. Any trade to a new team would have come with a new contract from that team. No team was going to trade for Josh Sweat, who's in the final year of his deal, if he did not agree to a new contract. So the problem was, what Josh Sweat wanted in a new contract, no team was willing to give him. So what Sweat then decided to do was he comes back to the Eagles on a restructured deal, not an extension. So we're still waiting for the final details of this restructured deal, but it's not an extension. So he's still in the final year of his contract. He's still only, what's Sweat, 26 years old, or is he 27 now? Let's see. 
He's 26, but he will turn 27 at the end of the month. So Josh Sweat's still only 27 years old. So he restructures his deal. He gets a little bit more guaranteed money. I kind of want to see the final details because maybe it actually frees up some cap space for the Eagles because his cap hit was $9 million. Depending on how they structured it, it could lower that cap hit. But in essence now, this is a prove-it deal for Josh Sweat because he comes back. It's the final year of his deal. If he performs well, he gets another shot at free agency this coming offseason. So it's kind of a win-win. The Eagles get Josh Sweat back. He's going to be playing hard because he needs to prove himself because he wants that that shot at free agency this coming offseason to see if he can get the money he wanted this offseason. There were no takers. No team was going to trade for Josh Sweat and give him the deal he wanted. So that's why I think things switched, because the last I had heard, he was definitely going to be traded. But once he gave his salary demands to the new teams, nobody wanted to give him that money. So now Sweat is back. So what does this mean now? What does this mean for Hassan Reddick? Because I was under the impression that the plan was going to be Trade Josh Sweat, extend Reddick. Well, now Sweat's coming back. So now you look at that edge rusher position. You still have Josh Sweat. They just signed Bryce Huff to a three-year, $51 million deal. You brought back Brandon Graham. I know he's not going to play a lot, but he's going to make this team, obviously. You still have Nolan Smith who I still think the Eagles are very high on, as they should be. It was only his rookie season. So you have Nolan Smith. They brought in Julian Aquara from the Detroit Lions earlier in the offseason before free agency hit. No guarantee he makes the team, but he's another edge rusher. And this most recent signing, linebacker Zach Bawn, also has the ability to get after the quarterback. I expect him to play a similar role to what Andrew Van Ginkle played under Vic Fangio in Miami. So is there enough room for Redick when you have Huff, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith, Julian Aquara, Zach Bond? Now, no guarantees Aquara or even Bond make the roster. But is there enough room for Hassan Redick? Now, here's the major difference, because I see in the chat people saying, do the same thing for Redick that you just did for Sweat. The only difference is Sweat was willing to do that. Sweat was willing to restructure his deal to come here on essentially a prove-it deal because he's only going to be 27. So he's going to hit free agency this coming offseason after the 2024 season at 27 years old. Hassan Reddick's 30. When does Reddick turn 31? Because Hassan Reddick's going to be a little bit more reluctant. He needs his big money deal now. Well, he's 29, so he will be 30 September. So when the season starts, Reddick will be 30. So when he hits free agency, he'll be 30 years old. So is a team going to be willing to give him the big money deal he wants? So if I'm Reddick, I'm trying to strike this season. So my understanding, though, is Reddick's contract demands are still extremely high. I think the Eagles would like to bring him back. But if Reddick goes out there and another team isn't willing to give him the big money deal that he wants, maybe he comes back to the Eagles and says, look, I'll be willing to take this. Because right now he's underpaid. I think everybody agrees Hassan Reddick is severely under paid. He makes $15 million a year. They just gave Bryce Huff more than $15 million a year. So not only was Reddick underpaid before the cap went up, now that the cap went way up, Reddick is really underpaid. I think he deserves $20 million a year, maybe even a little bit more, maybe $21 million a year. But I think Reddick probably wants to be paid over $25 million a year. And I don't think there's a team out there that's willing to give it to him. So if that is the case, can they work something out? But here's where the issue lies. 
if they bring back Redick, if they don't extend them, because people are saying do what he did with, with Josh Sweat, if you only bring back Redick on essentially a prove-it deal, and you brought back Josh Sweat on essentially a prove-it deal, and now you brought in Bryce Huff, and you want to give Nolan Smith more playing time, and you got Brandon Graham, how happy are Josh Sweat and Hassan Reddick going to be here when they're in a prove-it year to get their new contract and they're not playing as many snaps or as many reps as they have in previous years? See, that's where problems can happen. I've had people ask me the question about, well, what about Saquon Barkley on that offense? How are they going to make everybody happy on the offense? There's only one football. But the difference is Barkley already got his big deal. A.J. Brown already got his big deal. Devontae Smith will get his big deal, which I want to talk about after the break. So I'm not as worried about those guys being happy because they already got their money. But if you bring back Sweat like you did on a prove-it deal and you brought back Redick on a similar prove-it deal, how happy are they going to be when they're not getting the amount of reps they need to earn that big payday this offseason? So the only way I see Reddick coming back is if they agree to an extension. I don't think Reddick's going to want a prove-it type deal like Josh Sweat just had. Now, I will go on record as saying I want him back. I want that type of depth on the edge because we saw it last year when Sweat and Reddick both played over 800 snaps. They hit that wall. So keep Hassan Reddick, extend him, and now I love the depth. I love that we're going to be rotating through Reddick, Huff, Sweat, Nolan Smith, BG. That should really help them get after the quarterback. But when we get back, you heard me just mention Devontae Smith. Because he's a guy that needs to get paid. So I want to take a look at the current cap space situation because Howie Roseman, we've talked about this before. We can debate what he does in the draft. We can debate what he does when it comes to player evaluation. But he is a master when it comes to the salary cap. So I'll give you the updated cap numbers about where the Eagles are and what I think that could mean for Devontae Smith. I also want to get into a little Sixers, a little Flyers, as well. This is the Philly Sports Power Hour. I'm Bill Calarulo. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA. And the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. 
Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech, we offer three major services, the first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Yo, yo, welcome back to the Philly Sports Power Hour. With Bill Calarulo. Appreciate everybody here spending this hour with me. We're also live on TikTok. So during the break, we had a few questions on TikTok about the Hassan Reddick issue. So people are asking, if they did trade Reddick, what do I think they could get? And unfortunately, I don't think you're going to get a lot. As much as I like Hassan Reddick, the fact that any trade would have to come with a new contract for Reddick I don't think a team is going to give up a ton of draft capital when they have to pay Reddick more than probably $25 million a year. So I would think best case scenario, and this would be the ultimate best case scenario, you're getting a second round draft pick. And I think that's unlikely. I think you're probably more likely to get a third and a fifth, maybe a third and a six round draft pick only because the new team has to pay him such a big deal. And I was also talking on TikTok during the break about it would make sense for the Eagles, though, if they are going to trade Reddick to do it after June 1st, because their cap savings would go from about a million dollars to about 15 million if they were to do it post June 1st. Now, that may not be possible because the most likely time for them to make that trade is at the draft. That would be the most likely time. So we'll continue to see what they can get for Reddick. Yeah, I see Solvain saying him in a second for a first-round pick. Maybe, depending on where that first-round pick was, if the Eagles were to give up their 50th overall pick to maybe move up uh, to to the bottom of the draft, you know, get back into the 30s maybe, low 20s, maybe a team would do that. So I don't know if that would make sense for the Eagles. It would really depend on if there's a player there that they like. But we'll do more We'll do more draft talk as it gets closer. But we'll keep monitoring that Reddick situation. I hope they could figure it out. I hope they can keep them. But the Josh Sweat restructure makes it less likely that that would happen. But before the break, we were talking about the current cap space. And Howie Roseman is a freaking magician, man, when it comes to the cap. Because the Eagles sign Saquon Barkley, Bryce Huff, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Devin White, Zach Bond, Matt Hennessy. Who else did they sign? They make the trade for Kenny Pickett. They extend Landon Dickerson. They extend Josh Sweat. Or excuse me, Jake Elliott. And yet, you look at the current cap space in the NFL, and according to OverTheCap.com, the Eagles are still fourth with the most cap space in the entire league, sitting there with $39 million. How the hell does this guy keep doing it, man? How does he keep doing this? Unbelievable. Hold on. Our man, Big Sills. Our man, Big Sills, with the tweet. Looks like the reasons the birds didn't make the move with the Chicago Bears for Justin Fields was because Howie was afraid Fields might look better in the Eagles offense than Hurts. Come on, Sills, with this shit. Sorry for cursing. It's not the reason they didn't make the move for Justin Fields. They didn't make the move for Justin Fields because it would have made zero freaking sense for a backup quarterback 
Justin Fields to come in here because, okay, let's assume Big Sills is right. He looks better than Jalen Hurts, which is impossible because the guy hasn't looked better in Chicago once in his career. So then what do you do? You're not going to exercise his fifth-year option before May 2nd. So this is where I don't buy that argument at all. You're not going to see Justin Fields in this offense until August. But the Eagles would have to make a decision about exercising that fifth-year option in May. That's why you don't make the move. Because you truly don't know what you have until August. Do you understand? So you're not going to exercise the fifth-year option in May before you see him. So it doesn't make sense to bring him here. It doesn't matter what he does. You're not going to have him the following season. Ridiculous. Anyway. Get me all worked up, Sills. So let me just read this quick article while we're on here because it's now being reported on Mike Florio. Fields did not want to be the backup to Jalen Hurts. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. The reason he didn't want to come here is because he didn't want to be a backup, and that's what he would have been. Get out of here with this crap. Yeah, they didn't want him because he was going to look better than Jalen Hurts. Sure, Justin Fields all of a sudden was going to become an amazing player. Get out of here. Big Sills, if you're in the chat, what the hell are you talking about? Anyway, let's look at the salary cap. Eagles right now have $39 million in cap space. And here's what I love. The Dallas Cowboys haven't done a damn thing. They signed Eric Kendricks at linebacker. And they still only have $4.5 million, which puts them 31st in the NFL. Now, that's probably going to go up about $5 million because the Dallas Cowboys, listen to this, listen to this genius move by their front office. We've talked before on the show about how Dak Prescott has a $59.4 million cap hit. And the only real way to get that way down is to extend him. Well, it gets reported today that the Dallas Cowboys haven't extended Dak. They just restructured his deal, and it's going to save them. You ready for this? Five million. So now Dak Prescott's cap hit drops from 59.4 to 54.4 million. Great job, Dallas. Now you only have a $54 million cap hit for your starting quarterback. So I know there's still chatter. They want to extend him, but I've said it before on the show. If I'm Dak Prescott, why the hell am I agreeing to anything unless they pay me a ton of money? He's in the driver's seat. Dak Prescott should sit back and say, pay me the most money of any quarterback in the NFL or I will not extend my deal. And then guess what? The Cowboys come out this season. Dak plays, and then he gets an opportunity at free agency next year, especially when you look at what these other quarterbacks are getting, Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, whether you like Dak Prescott or not, he would get paid next offseason, paid. So if I'm Dak, I'm sitting back and saying, Jerry, pay me a ton of money or I will not agree to an extension. Flagger 57, the 39 million does include those contracts, man. Those are updated numbers from over the cap and spot rack with all of the reported deals that they currently have, that they still would have 39 million. So let me check. That was from over the cap. Let me see where spot rack has them. But that did include the recent deals. Let's see what we got. Recent deals. Let's see what Spot Rack has. Team salary caps. They got the Eagles still at $39 million, man. The Washington Commanders, who had 83, now have 63. So they do in- include a majority of the new deals. So some of the contracts have not been updated yet. But the big ones, we know the Saquon Barkley deal. I believe they know the Bryce Huff deal, but maybe. Maybe that hasn't been included, but that was the updated numbers that they currently have. But whether it's 39 million, whether it drops to 30 million, 28 million, who cares? Who cares? They're still going to have a ton of cap space. 
I mean, we, we can debate over a few million dollars if you want, but they still have a ton of cap space. They had a ton of cap space going in. They were in better situation than the Cowboys. They were in a better situation than the 49ers. And that's why when you guys, when all my Power Hour crew in the chat was coming after me, calling me Bill Spadaro to start the offseason because I was being overly positive, this is what I was talking about. The future looked good. They made good hires at offensive and defensive coordinator. And Howie had a ton of money to spend, more money than I can ever imagine him having. I don't remember in his time as a GM having this much money. And even though they spent all this money, they're still in a good spot. And it was smart to extend Landon Dickerson. It was smart to extend Jake Elliott. But now what happens with Devontae Smith? So let's talk about Devontae for a minute before we switch over to some Sixers and Flyers talk. So Devontae Smith is entering the fourth year of his rookie deal. And if you follow the show, you understand the way this works. First round draft picks come with a fifth year option. So the Philadelphia Eagles would have until May 2nd to exercise Devontae Smith's fifth year option. Because of his playing time, that's going to be around $15.6 million. They will exercise that simply because it allows them to control his rights for the next two seasons. But I know they would like to get a long-term deal done. And they should get that long-term deal done as soon as possible. Because the deal they give Devontae Smith will never be as cheap as it will be right now. It is only going to continue to get higher and higher and higher the longer they wait. OK, because look at this. Darnell Mooney. Darnell Mooney got three years, thirty nine million dollars from the Atlanta Falcons. Darnell Mooney last year had four hundred yards. Four hundred yards in twenty twenty two, four hundred ninety three yards. Guess who his quarterback was, by the way? Justin Fields. The, the great Justin Fields now all of a sudden. The great Justin Fields that Big Sills thinks is going to come in here and would be better than Jalen Hurts. Come on, man. Ridiculous. And then you look at A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, both with over 1,000 yards receiving. But the, Jalen Hurts had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with that. This is what I love about the Jalen Hurts haters. It's all the playmakers around them, but Jalen has nothing to do with it. But when they don't win... It's not the playmakers not performing. It's Jalen Hurts. When they win, not Jalen Hurts, everybody else. When they lose, Jalen Hurts, not everybody else. You can't have it both ways. If they're winning and you don't give Jalen Hurts credit, you can't blame them for all the losses either. I can't stand the Jalen Hurts haters, man. Can't stand it. And he'll show you this year. He'll show you this year. I've been high on Hurts since he got out of college. I will continue to be until he proves otherwise. And you're going to see 2024 what Jalen Hurts does. And you know what we're going to hear? You know what we're going to hear this season when Jalen Hurts has a great year? Well, look at all the weapons he has around. It's not Jalen Hurts. It's not Jalen Hurts. Look, I mean, it's because he's got Saquon Barkley. It's because he's got A.J. Brown. Jalen Hurts isn't a good quarterback. I can't stand the Hurts haters, man. I can't stand it. There's other quarterbacks in this league that have weapons who don't do anything. So mark it down. Clip the clip. Re screen record it if you want to. Jalen Hurts will have a great season in 2024. And then you can come back and you can troll me if he doesn't. But he will have a great season in 2024. Anyway, Devontae Smith. They should pay him now. Because if Darnell Mooney's getting three years, $39 million, what the hell is it going to cost you for Devontae? So I went and looked. You look at some other contracts that were given out. Calvin Ridley got four years, $92 million. That's $23 million a year. Michael Pittman got three years, $70 million. That's $23 million a year. Pittman has 2,000-yard seasons. Calvin Ridley has two thousand yard seasons Devonte smith in three years has two thousand yard seasons and one of them he missed by 80 yards 
So I think Devontae, if you were to extend him right now, is going to get over $23 million a season. AJ gets $25 million. So, but I think they got to do it now because when that cap goes up next year, if you have to, if you wait until next offseason to pay Devontae, you're going to pay him even more than that when the cap goes up. Pay him now. I would say give him something around 23, 24 million a year. Lock him up for the next three or four seasons. Maybe a similar deal to what the Titans just gave Calvin Ridley. Four years, 92 million. Hell, maybe match him to AJ. Eagles gave A.J. Brown four years, $100 million two years ago. Maybe give Devontae four years, $100 million. And I don't worry about the cap because how we will figure out the cap, backload the hell out of the deal so that his cap hit is the highest in years three and year four when the cap's going to be even higher. So that's what I'm thinking. Four years, $100 million. Get it done, Howie. Get it done. Get it done. And I'm still all worked up about the Jalen Hurts hate thinking Justin Fields is going to be better than Jalen Hurts. Ridiculous. Get out of here. Anyway, let's switch gears for a second. I want to talk a little 76ers because we got some good news. Maybe I'm reaching here because I wanted good news. Hold on real quick. Tin Man asking, does the cap go up every year? Yes, the cap usually goes up every year, Tin Man, because it is based off of NFL revenue. The only year it didn't go up was the COVID year because the revenue was down. Obviously, there were no fans in the building, but it has gone up every single season. And this offseason, it went up a record $30 million because it's based off of revenue. They were done paying back player benefits from those COVID years. So the cap should go up even more next season, especially with all these new contracts they have with the streaming services now. They got Amazon Prime. They got Peacock. So it's going to go up even more next season. But let's talk about our 76ers. So before the game on Saturday night, Nick Nurse was asked about Joel Embiid, and he acknowledged that the whispers that Joel had performed some on-court activities were probably true, but he hadn't seen it. And then he spoke yesterday and said that Joel Embiid did do some on-court activities. It was non-contact drills, but that they're starting to ramp him up. We could all take a breath because the fact that they're starting to ramp him up, in my opinion, they would not be doing this if he wasn't, in fact, coming back. So the reports we got, I guess it was last week, was that the Sixers were hopeful he would come back for the first or second week in April. So right now, the 76ers have 15 games left. They play tonight against the Miami Heat. Oh, man, roast pork Italian coming after me, saying I'm like going to the Eagles website. Listen, dude, I've said this before. I am going to give you my true feelings. I'm going to be objective as I can be. And right now, I am not going to sit here and bash Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts is a very good quarterback. You want to hate on Jalen Hurts? Feel free. But I think what the guy has done in his first three seasons as a starter, that we are crazy to sit here and act like Jalen Hurts isn't a good quarterback. If you think that's me being on the Eagles website, then that's me being on the Eagles website. But I'm not going to do what others do, not judging other people, but I'm not going to sit up here and be negative and negative and negative so that I get clicks and shares. That's not who I am. I'm going to tell you what I truly believe. And I truly believe watching three seasons of Jalen Hurts to sit up here and act like Jalen Hurts is a horrible quarterback is ridiculous, especially when you look around the NFL and you see other quarterbacks in this league. For us to sit up here and act like Jalen Hurts is a bad quarterback is insane. Absolutely insane. And if you want to follow and you want to watch shows that do it so that they get their clicks and they get their shares, then that's not this show because I'm going to tell you how I truly feel. And if you think that I'm just an Eagles cheerleader, I have been very critical of Howie Roseman when it comes to how he drafts. I've been very critical of the defensive draft picks over the last few years and why I thought the defense was in the predicament it was last year. Because I did not like the draft picks before this past draft. I think he had a good defensive draft, the most recent draft. 
But when you look at the second, third, and fourth year players that he drafted, they weren't contributing. So I will be critical when it's time to be critical. During the season, I was critical down the stretch. But to sit here now and to be negative about this football team, in my opinion, is ridiculous. Because everything is headed in the right direction. And I will stand here and I will tell you that Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback in this league. And I don't understand anybody else who sits up here and acts like the guy stinks based off of nothing. Yeah, he had a tough stretch the last eight games of the season. So did the entire team. And this is, again, why the arguments don't work. People, oh, well, Justin Fields wasn't good because the Chicago Bears weren't good. Well, how come we can't give the same excuse to Jalen Hurts down the stretch? Was the entire Philadelphia Eagles team good down the stretch? No, but that's no, no, no. That doesn't apply to Jalen. Doesn't apply to Jalen. When they win, it's because of the other players. When they lose, no, no, no. That has nothing to do with Jalen Hurts' struggles. Get out of here. Anyway, 76ers, 15 games left. They're currently a seventh seed. They're only a half game back of the Pacers for the sixth seed. For them to do anything in the playoffs, they got to be in that top six. I don't want to see them in the play-in tournament because we've talked about it before on this show. Look at the NCAA tournament. The reason why there are so many upsets is because it's only one game. It's only one game. And you look at the Sixers, I don't want to see them in one game playing tournament. I don't want to see them in a one game playing tournament with a rusty Joel Embiid. Give us a seven game series against the Cleveland Cavaliers with a healthy Joel Embiid starting to ramp up. And I think they got a shot at winning that. And I think if you get a healthy Joel, and you know I've been down on the Sixers, but if you get a healthy Joel Embiid back, and he's never played with Kyle Lowry and Buddy Heald, and very limited with Kelly Oubre, because Oubre had that bicycle incident, whatever the hell that was, and Oubre's playing really well over the last 10 games or so, I think they can beat a lot of teams in the East, with the exception of the Celtics. They're not getting past the Celtics. No matter what, if Joel comes back, they're not getting past the Celtics. But could they make a little bit of a run? Could we get some playoff basketball? Look, I'm grabbing for straws here, man. I want some positivity. I want to enjoy some playoff basketball. Maybe they get out of the second damn round. They're not getting past the Celtics. But I'm hopeful maybe they can come back with Joel and win a series or two. Now, you look at Joel before his injury. This team was 27-8 and with Embiid. And like I said, never played with Lowry, never played with Buddy Heald, really didn't play a lot with Kelly Oubre. So maybe they can do something. And how about Maxie? Let's give Maxie a little bit of love, showing us he's Philly tough, taking an elbow to to the nose, blood everywhere on Saturday night in the third quarter, and he comes right back in like a hockey player. So a little love to Tyrese, but we'll see. If Joel can come back the first week of April, he could get seven games under his belt before the playoffs. If he comes back the second week, he's only going to get three or four games under his belt before the playoffs. But I think they have to figure out a way to stay in that top six. I don't see that happening, which makes me nervous about the play-in tournament because it's only one game. But then talking about hockey players, I said Maxie was like a hockey player. Let's look at the Fly guys because the Flyers are also in a playoff push. Right now, they're third in the Metro. Let's take a look at the updated standings here because they're third in the Metro, but they are only three points up on the Capitals, who have two games in hand, and three points up on the Islanders, who have one game in hand. So every game matters. If they can't make it by being in the top three of the Metro, we got to hope for a wild card. And right now, they're behind the Lightning in the wild card and they're only two points up on the Red Wings. So every single thing matters down the stretch. They only have 14 games left. And listen to this stretch. Their next five games, all playoff teams, the Maple Leafs, the Hurricanes, the Bruins, the Panthers, and the Rangers. So thankfully, Tortorella's back. But this Flyers team, they need to steal some points in the next five games because if they go on a little bit of a rough stretch the next five, You're going to see them on the outside looking in 
after this great season that has exceeded all expectations, it would be criminal if they don't make the playoffs. But there's no guarantees right now. So let's get behind the fly, guys. Only 14 games left. The next five are really important against five good teams. Let's hope Flyers can do what they can. Now, we didn't get a chance to do any Phillies talk because this is the power hour, not the power hours. So we'll do some Phillies talk tomorrow. But like we end every Philly sports power hour with a little today in sports history. March 18th, 1995. I was 11 years old, and I was so excited to hear the news, March 18th, 1995, that the greatest NBA player, Michael Jordan, was coming back from retirement. This was his first retirement. He he retired October 6th, 1993, tried the whole baseball thing, and then he comes back March 18th, 1995, after 17 months retired. And the next season, they start their second three-peat, winning the NBA championship in the 96 season, the 97 season, the 98 season. MJ, and I will always say MJ is better than LeBron. Never going to convince me otherwise. Never will convince me otherwise. But Michael Jordan, March 18th, 1995, announced that he was coming back after his first 17-month retirement. Then he retired again, then came back again, and then had his official retirement. But love MJ. The GOAT, as my man Flexin' and Steppin' correctly says in the chat. But everybody, I don't always agree with you in the chat, but you know I love that you are here. I respect your opinions. I love the engagement. Keep it coming. Thank you for spending this hour with me. Even when you're wrong, in the chat, Appreciate everybody here on TikTok. Hit that like button. Make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, Bill Calarulo Philly Sports Talk. Make sure you are subscribed to the Jacob Sports Network. Like I tell you always, make sure you're following me on all social media profiles, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and make sure you're following me on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it as well. I've been a lot more active on there lately also. But thanks for everybody for being here. Stay tuned. Your man Big Sills will be joining at 2 p.m. for the National Football Show with Dan Cilio. So I know a lot of you will be checking in for that as well. Hit that like button on your way out. And as always, go Birds.